Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to episode 46 of my Logic Pro 10 video tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to continue working with the new drummer plugin. And if you haven't watched the uh, first part of this uh, drummer plugin two part series, I recommend you do so. Um, so, what I've done since the first video is I've just kind of composed a really basic bass drum and uh, bass drum and guitar idea. So this is what the uh, the drummer plugin sounds like. So I'm using one of the uh, songwriter kits and I'm kind of applying a bit of a eighth note swing to it. And this is what the uh, the guitar and bass sound like together. It's just acoustic guitar and just a MIDI bass. Um, the very first function I want to show you is one of the functions that I didn't show you in the previous video, and that is the follow function. What follow does is you can make the kick and snare pattern of the drummer region or your drummer instrument, you can make that follow the rhythmic pattern of either a MIDI instrument like our bass or even an audio instrument. So what I'm going to do is, let me just show you what this sounds like now, and uh, let me just pull the volume down a bit on the bass and the guitar because they're really going to get drowned out there. And you'll hear that the the kind of the, the syncopation of the kick and snare doesn't quite match what's going on in the, uh, like the bass line. Like it's, it sounds okay because the drums are swung so they kind of fit uh, the guitar and bass because they're also swung, but there's a couple little kick hits that just don't quite, you know, don't quite sync up to the bass line. So the way around this, uh, a quick way around this is to use this follow function. Uh, what you do is you just click on it and then you can choose which track you want the kick and snare to follow. Um, so I can choose between my acoustic guitar audio track or the bass uh, software instrument track. And as you can see there, just by clicking on it, you'll see that the uh, the actual pattern changes up here. If I click on it again, you'll see it change. So I'm probably going to get more of like a standard quarter note uh, kick drum pattern now, something that kind of matches the notes in, in the bass part. So let's try that with just the bass and let's see if that syncs up a little bit better now. Yeah, that syncs up a lot better and let's uh, bring the guitar in as well. All right, so that fits nicely. I just kind of tweaked the pattern over here a bit. Um, let's talk about customizing uh, the actual drummer um, instrument. Um, the drummer plugin or instrument is actually not its own. It's not called drummer. The actual uh, instrument plugin for drummer is actually called the drum kit designer, which uh, is a new plugin for for Logic Ten. 
Um, you can access the drum kit designer either by clicking down here on the uh, kit that the dr that particular uh, drummer you have selected is using, or you can go up to the um, to the software instrument plugin up here and click on it. So let me just click on that. And what we can do is we can fully customize what the kick, the snare, the sound, the toms, the the hi hats sound like for this drummer. So I can keep this exact same pattern, but I can I can pick a completely different drum set if I want to. Uh, the quick way to do that is just to go to the presets menu up here and choose a different preset drum kit. So let me try like the East Bay kit. I know this is more of like a, a heavy rock punk sort of sounding drum kit. It's got a little bit more punch to it than that uh, that the previous kit. Let's try another one just to see what we've got. The scientific method kit. Let's try that one. Yeah, a little bit warmer, more of like a sort of like a dancer disco kit. I'm actually gonna stick with the East Bay kit. Um, what you can do in addition to just choosing a preset kit is you can customize each of the drums. So if I click on the kick drum you'll actually see that there's three different kick drums that we can pick from. Um, let's say I want to go with the third one. You can actually customize the tuning of each drum. So let's say I want this to be a little bit lower. I can detune it. And I can also dampen it if I feel like it's kind of ringing out a little bit too long. So you can make it a little bit, sh the kind of envelope on it a little bit shorter. And if you feel like that drum is a little too loud or a little too soft, you can pull up or pull down the gain. So I'll pull up the gain a bit because I want to hear a little bit more kick. Let's click on the snare next. And again, you get three different snare drums to pick from. I kind of like the original snare. Um, I just kind of want to dampen it a little bit. And give it a little bit more gain. Now for the toms, you can individually click on each tom, but when you click on the toms, it actually selects all three of them. What you'll see is that you don't get a set of different toms on the left side. For each of the preset kits, you're kind of stuck with the toms that you get. What you can customize is the tuning, the dampening, or the gain of each of the individual toms. So you can choose to edit all three of the toms at the same time by clicking all, or you can choose individual toms, the low, the high, the, uh, the mid, the low, mid, high toms. So let's say I want my low tom to be a little bit lower. We'll pull the tuning down. And maybe I want my high tom to be a little bit higher. Maybe I want all of the toms to be a little bit louder as well. There we go. Let's actually pull the low one up just a little bit. There we go. Now for symbols, um, you can edit the crashes. And you can also edit the ride symbol over here. Say I want my right crash over here to be a little bit higher tuned. Actually, whoops, you'll see it says crash left and crash right up here. So I was actually editing the left crash there. Let's edit the right one, pull that up a bit. And you can do the same thing for the hi-hat. So with the kick and the snare, you can fully customize what sample you're using for the toms and the cymbals. Uh, you're a little more limited to what you can what you can edit, but you can edit the tuning, the dampening, and then the gain of it. Uh, the other thing you can do is if you are using one of the auxiliary percussion here, as I showed in the previous video, like a tambourine or a shaker or something, you can also edit the volume of those. Those are just hidden down here. You have to click on this little uh, triangle here. And it shows the shaker, the tambourine, uh, claps, as well as some of the other kits have cowbell and stick uh, clicks. So for this particular pattern, I am using a tambourine. So maybe I want a little bit more tambourine. I'll just pull the, 
the tambourine volume up a bit. So now let's take a listen to what this sounds like. And you can go in, you can edit the drum, uh, the drum set in real time as it's playing, and you know, you just wait a second or two for it to update, and it'll update the sample and um, it'll update all the changes that you've made. So you can kind of customize on the fly, which is really nice. So let's see what this sounds like now with the uh, the bass and the guitar in there. Yeah, that's much better. Um, for this next example, I'm actually going to mute out the bass and the guitar um, because I just kind of want to get in and, and work with the drums here. Um, as many of you probably already know, when you're working with live drums, you're not just working with a stereo track like this. And one of the things that I talked about, I, I believe, in the previous video is that the region up here, although it looks like a waveform, is not actually a waveform. It's essentially just a, a MIDI region is what it is. Um, one of the things that we, one of the advantages you have in recording a real life live drum kit is you usually have each drum on a different track and you can individually mix each drum. Here, all of the drums are all on the same, the same track. So, you know, if I wanted to brighten it up a little bit, go to my EQ here. I'd have to boost the signal of all of the drums in order to brighten up the kit. And that doesn't sound bad, but what if I only want to brighten, say, the overhead, you know, like the, the overhead, you know, mics, like the, like the, the, the crash cymbals and the hi-hat and the ride cymbal and things like that. But I don't want to, you know, I don't want to brighten the kick and the snare and the toms. Um, that's where our kind of the limitation is unless you use a, a mode for the, the drum kit designer that's called multi-output mode. Um, so let me go to my mixer, just hit command two. The way you can turn on multi-output mode is you go to the uh, instrument plugin here for Drum Kit Designer. You click on the little um, arrows on the right side. And what you do is instead of choosing stereo, you choose multi-output. What multi-output does is it allows you to send each group of instruments to a different auxiliary channel strip that is a drummer aux track. So you can have like the kick drum on an aux track, the snare drum on an aux track, the hi hat and aux, you know auxiliary percussion on an aux track, the toms on a separate aux track, as well as the crash cymbals on a separate track. So you're able to separate each drum on its own track. So you can add, uh, you know, you can customize what types of plugins you want in each one. You can customize the volume and pan of each one as well. Um, so I'm going to click on multi output. And the only real difference you'll see on the channel strip is toward the bottom, there's this plus and minus sign. Well, if I click on that a couple times, four times, you'll see kick, snare, toms, hi-hat, percussion. It's automatically created an aux track that is attached to the drummer track that will control the signal of each of those instruments individually. So if I just solo out all of the drummer, um, the drummer track plus all of its aux tracks, you'll see that now the instruments are, are, are isolated from each other. So if I just solo out the kick track, we're just going to hear kick, solo out snare. We'll just hear the snare. And the same thing goes for the toms. Um, for the hi-hat percussion, you're going to hear the hi-hat plus the aux percussion. So we'll hear like our tambourine or our shaker here. Um, and then the, the main drummer track actually holds the crash cymbals. So now what I can do is I can take the 
plugins off of this track that I want taken off. And actually, one quick thing I'm going to need to do real quick is just um, set these buses to bus two here, just so you can hear what's going on there. Um, but for now, don't worry about what these buses are doing. Um, it, the drummer plugin comes with one bus uh, sent, uh, that's going to a reverb. Bus two is just so that you can hear what I'm hearing. It goes to my, it basically sends the output of logic to my screen capture software. So don't worry about that for now. So, um, so yeah, so now I can, um, I should be able to um, kind of individually mix each one of those aux tracks. So if I just start with the main drummer track, that's going to contain the overheads, like the uh, the crash cymbals, as well as the ride cymbal. I can kind of mix that channel individually now. I'm just going to add a bit of uh, EQ and compression just to kind of you know flatten the dynamics a little bit as well as to brighten it up a bit. And then pull the volume down on it. Kick drum, I want to brighten it up with a bit of EQ. For the snare drum, I'm, I'm going to add a bit of EQ as well and probably compress it. For the toms, I'm probably going to EQ those as well. Just give them a little bit more, um, you know, brightness in the high end. Give it a little low end boost as well. And then for the hi hat, I'm going to kind of copy over the EQ signature from the overhead track. Um, you can do that just by holding Option on the plugin, just pulling it over. And it duplicates it for us. And for the hi hat, since um, I'm kind of visualizing this on the left or right side of the kit, I'm going to kind of pull it over to the right side of the kit there, just the pan. Let's see what that sounds like now with just uh, just all of our drums. <laughs> So I've EQ'd and compressed a few things, more or less just kind of bread and butter, you know, basic things that you would do, uh, you know, on like just like you would do like on live drums, just to kind of brighten things up a bit, maybe make certain tracks a little more punchy, a little more poppy sounding. Uh, one of the things that um, you're given on your drummer track is a bus on your sends, and this bus is used for reverb. Um, I'm actually going to remove that and start from scratch just to show you how to properly add reverb. Uh, and you'll see that when you, whenever you create a drummer track, it automatically will create an aux track with uh, the Space Designer plugin on it, which is a reverb plugin. It's just a convolution reverb plugin. I'm going to go ahead and delete that aux track, and I'm going to start from scratch for you. Um, so what we need to do, the, the proper way to add reverb to drums, uh, to multi-track drums, or really any multi-track um, session, 
is not to add reverb on every single channel strip. You're First of all, you're wasting processing power, and if you decide to change the type of reverb you want, you're gonna have to replace all of those plugins. So I don't wanna put five reverb plugins on here. What I wanna do is I wanna use my sends to bust the signal, bust some signal, from the, each of these audio tracks over to an aux track, and so I can have a separate sort of like wet, you know, um, like a wet control just for, for reverb, and then the dry control will be on these aux tracks. So what I'm gonna do is go up to options and go to create new auxiliary channel strip or create a new aux track, which is a control N. And on my new aux track, I'm gonna call this drum verb. And I'm uh, on the inserts, I'm gonna put the, under reverb, I'm gonna use the space designer plugin. It's a really awesome convolution reverb plugin. It's uh, honestly, this plugin alone is worth the $200 price of Logic. So uh, let me go to medium spaces. We'll go to halls. Let's go to plate and we'll use a, a drum plate reverb. Now, whenever you're using time-based plugins like chorus, delay, reverb on an aux track, you wanna make sure that the dry signal of the plugin is all the way down and that the reverb uh, signal, the wet signal, it doesn't have to be all the way up, but is up. You don't wanna have the dry signal in here because that's just gonna duplicate the signal from our other tracks on this track. So what we, what, what our goal here is that on this aux, on this aux track, whoops, I'm getting some signal there. Um, what we're, what the goal here is that we want this aux track to just contain the wet signal, just just the reverb on this aux track, not the dry signal from our other drums. And actually, just to make this a little easier to, to see, uh, I'm just gonna hide my, I'm just gonna go ahead and hide my bass and my guitar tracks, just so you don't have to look at those. There we go. Um, so this drum verb track will just have reverb on it, and the dry signal will be coming from these other uh, drum tracks. So th what we need to do is we need to make this drum verb uh, aux track have an input of a bus. So we'll go up to the input, and we'll say bus one, since we're not using bus one. We are using bus two for my video capture. Um, so now that the input of that drum verb track is bus one, we're gonna go to the sends on each of these tracks, and we're gonna make the sends go to bus one. And by the way, if you select all of those tracks, um, if you select all of those tracks while you as assign a send, uh, or you know assign bus one to it, it'll assign bus one to all of them. And while they're all selected, if you pull the bus amount up, the send amount up, it will adjust all of the sends. So if you're still a bit confused about how this works, a send essentially just is like a virtual, like a bus is like a virtual pathway between two tracks, at least in the software world, it's a virtual pathway. So it's a way to send a little bit of signal from here over to here, and that the amount of signal that's sent is based on this little uh, knob here. So what we're gonna, what we're doing is we're sending a little bit of say the overheads, the kick, the snare, and so forth, over to this aux track so that we can have a wet signal that's just you know just reverb. So for the overheads for the cymbals, I want you know a little bit of reverb. For the kick, I don't quite want as much reverb. For the snare, I want quite a bit. For the toms, I want quite a bit. And for the hi-hat, I want a little bit less. So you can vary the amount of reverb you're gonna hear for each instrument by adjusting uh, the bus amount. So now if I hit play, Each of our drummer tracks are sending signal over to this aux track to create a wet signal, to create a, a, a reverb signal. And if I just solo that uh, drum verb, you'll hear just the wet signal, just the reverb signal. And uh, hang on, you're gonna—I'm gonna have to turn this to bus two for you to hear that. There we go. Let's try that again. So the amount of reverb you're going to hear is based on 
Um, the amount of reverb you're going to hear on this aux track is based on the send amount for each of these tracks here. All right, so let's see what this sounds like all together now that I've got my, um, my buses all set up properly. All right, let's try that now with our bass and our guitar as well. I'm just going to unhide those. Remember to hide tracks, uh, you just hit H, and then you uh, press the H on the track to actually hide the track. And there you go. That's the uh, that's the drummer plugin. Um, one of the things you can do with this is, let's say you want to take these drum parts and you want them to be kind of like their own individual audio track, as opposed to having to work with MIDI. Um, you know, let's say you're taking this drum pattern, you want to move it over to Pro Tools or some other DAW. Um, what you can do is you can take the signal of each one of these drum tracks as well as the drum verb track and you can send it to another bus you know say starting on bus three and then what you can do is you can record each of those um, aux tracks to an audio track so looking at uh, my mixer here I've got drummer kick snare tom so that's five drums plus six with the verb so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create six audio tracks Whoops, that's not audio tracks. Six, uh, yeah, audio tracks, there we go. So the first one will be the uh, the cymbals, the second one will be the kick, then the snare, then the toms, then the hi-hat, then the uh, reverb signal. Go back to my mixer here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the inputs on these be bus three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And the way you can do that is you can just hold, while they're all selected, you can hold option and choose your first bus, bus three. It'll actually set them up in order, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, as opposed to having to go and individually choose them. Then what I'm gonna do is for each of my drum tracks, I'm gonna do the same thing, but for the output. So for the output starting here, this is gonna be three, bus three, so I have three, four, five, six, seven. And then for eight, I gotta go over to the drum verb here and choose eight, bus eight. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna print the signal um, from each of these tracks, each of these aux tracks, onto these audio tracks. So I have basically an audio hard copy of it that I can, you know, not really, I guess it's not really a hard copy, a, a waveform copy of it that's not, you know, based on MIDI so that I can drag that uh, audio recording over into another program like Pro Tools or what you know Cubase or whatever you're using. Um, so now what I can do is I can arm each of these audio tracks and just hit record. I'm going to let it ring for a little bit just to give the waveform a little bit of tail there. And basically what's happened is each of the individual drums that were on those aux tracks, including the reverb track as well, have been now uh, transferred over to a new audio file. So I no longer need my drummer track up. I no longer need any of my uh, aux tracks up. So I can get rid of the, uh, the drum verb track. Uh, let me just assign the the bus of these, so we're to bus two, so you can hear it in the screen capture. 
And what we have now is just five audio tracks that contain the output from the drummer plugin. And I could take these five drum tracks and take them over to whatever DAW I wanted to work with. And you can solo them and individually mix them just like you would, you know, say a live drummer where each drum is, uh, is recorded to a different track. So that concludes uh, this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And thanks again for watching.